This is North Korea, the land of communist rocket man and his waif a material sister. This is South Korea, the land of capitalist chables and a bunch of pop stars who look the same. These two Koreas are currently separated, but it has not always been this way. The Koreans in the Korean Peninsula started off with some Korean kingdoms fighting each other to crap, before being united under Goryeol, and later the Joseon dynasty. Due to its strategic geographical location, the Korean Peninsula became a natural buffer state between big bullies in the region throughout its history. The big bullies in the region include various Chinese dynasties, the Mongol Empire, the Russian Empire, and the Japanese, who annexed the whole of Korean Peninsula at the beginning of the 20th century. Fast forward, Japan surrendered in World War II after some American big bombs and the Soviet invasion of Japanese Manchuria. Japan was originally supposed to be partitioned between the Allies in their own occupation zones just like Germany and Austria, but that did not happen. Why? Because United States wanted Japan for itself and had the resources and some big bombs to enforce things its way. From the perspective of Japan, it's better to be occupied by United States rather than Soviet Russia. For the Korean Peninsula however, it was partitioned between United States and Soviet Russia at the 38th parallel line, because Mother Russia was already at the doorsteps of the Korean Peninsula after beating up Manchuria, and the Americans was worried of commies taking over all of Korea. A joint commission between United States and Soviet Russia was formed with the goal of eventually granting a unified administration and independence to Korea. However, due to the increasing distrust between United States and Russia, United States rejected Russia's proposal to withdraw troops from Korea to allow Koreans to do their own things. Separate Korean governments were formed in North and South Korea, adopting the opposing ideologies of their respective sponsors. Increasing tensions led to the outbreak of the Korean War, with the Korean frontline borders changing up and down. For the global superpowers, the Korean War was a matter of pride and championing the prestige of respective ideologies. Neither side wanted to give in or go all out because now both sides have those big bombs. For the average Koreans, the Korean War was a complete nightmare. After the Korean War, the Korean Peninsula was permanently divided along this heavily militarized border. North Korea and South Korea went on different paths as independent countries. In its early days, North Korea was comparable to South Korea. Then, the Han River miracle happened, and South Korea surpassed North Korea in terms of economic and social development. Following the fall of communism, North Korea went downhill as it lost a huge chunk of economic support from Soviet Russia and suffered severe famines. China thus effectively replaced Russia as the main economic and diplomatic supporter of North Korea. North Korea went all out in their nuclear arsenal development because it needs some leverage due to its isolated position in international relations, greatly annoying United States and worrying South Korea and Japan. Meanwhile, South Korea flexed its muscles through cars, technologies, and pretty boys, and here we are today. Today, North and South Korea are technically still at war with each other as no peace treaty was signed. There are existing efforts to reunify Korea from both sides of the government, but so far they have been unsuccessful. So why Germany and Vietnam can be reunified but Korea could not? Well, this is due to geography and geopolitics. Communist North Vietnam can reunify Vietnam because of the Ho Chi Minh Trail in neighboring countries and also the lack of public support in United States to continue beating up Vietnamese rice farmers. Capitalist West Germany can reunify Germany because Soviet Russia broke down and there was no resistance from Russia for West Germany to eat up East Germany. For Korea however, North Korea could not reunify South Korea without angering United States. South Korea could not reunify North Korea without angering Soviet Russia. With the rise of China as a superpower, the Korean Peninsula is effectively a proxy battleground between United States and China. United States and China could not risk a unified Korea leaning on either side, as both United States and China wanted Korea as a key ally in the Pacific region. The only way Korea can be reunited is if United States, China, Russia, and Japan are convinced that a unified Korea will be absolutely neutral and will not offend any sides. 
Good luck. If Korea is reunified, it will likely share similar fate as the reunification of Germany. The economic cost of developing North Korea will be heavy for South Korea. South Koreans will likely look down on North Koreans, and North Koreans will not be happy with those snobbish South Korean capitalists who exploit cheap labor in North Korea. It will be a Herculean task to reconcile both sides of Korea with different governmental administration, economic system, and societal culture after prolonged division. Thus, there is currently a lack of appetite amongst the Korean general public to see a reunified Korea. A divided Korea is likely here to stay for some time. But who knows, maybe someday some Korean pop fans can convince both sides of Korea to reunite so their favorite office will not have to go through compulsory military service. Thanks for watching.